Okay, so we're going to take a break from working on the Project Virgo and go and change the set of brake shoes on a Reliant Rebel. It's failed the MOT on handbrake being efficient on the right hand side, so chances are he needs new shoes. So join me and we'll show you how it's done. Okay, so this is the brake shoe in question on the Reliant Rebel. And the first thing you'll notice is a little retaining screw holding the drum on. So we just quickly undo that. Make sure you keep all these little screws safe because you'll need these to put these back in. Okay, and we'll pull the drum off. And straight away you can see now there's a contaminant inside the drum. If you look on the finger on the shoe, you can see the shoes are also contaminated. So even though there's plenty of meat on the shoes, the shoes will need to be replaced. So to get them off, we have to undo these two little retaining clips. Just hold it with the pliers, push in, turn 90 degrees, and then release it. So it can be a little bit fiddly. There we go, and that's that done. That's that one. So keep them safe. If you've got a little uh, margarine tub, that's the ideal way to keep them all together, save them running down the road. And then the same with this one. So we just give a grip of it. We have to push in and then turn 90 degrees. You can put your finger across the back to hold the pin, stop the pin rotating in some cases, but uh, it's not normally needed. You can normally do it quite easy this way. Now these shoes do actually have a circlip holding the handbrake mechanism into place. So just have to use the pliers to bend the two pins together and pull it out. And this one's not too bad a condition. So as you can see there, it's fairly good still. So we can reuse this one. So we'll keep it safe along with the other stuff. All right, now when getting the shoes out of the location, you've got the spring to fight against. Just watch your fingers so it don't bite you. Okay, so, and then we just wiggle the shoes off the drum. If you can get these springs undone, that's the easy way. And there we go, there's the brake shoes. So these are actually scrap, even though there's plenty of meat on them, purely because of the contaminant. Make a note as well of which holes that springs actually go in, because you've got, as you can see here, you've got three different types of holes, and this is for different vehicles, and this one uses the third hole. Okay, we'll have a quick look to see if the cylinder's gone, because of all this contaminant in here, it stands a chance that this is what's where the oil has come from. And note that is bone dry inside there. So all this contaminant hasn't actually come from the wheel cylinder. So what it looks like is actually grease. So somebody's been over enthusiastic with the grease and grease has melted and then simply contaminated the brake shoes. So we'll give it a thorough good cleaning. Make sure you put a little tub underneath the wheel uh, drum when you do this to capture all this uh, grime that's coming up. You don't want this running down the road. So don't be uh, afraid to use it and give it a thorough good cleaning and a blasting and get all the muck off it because you want to get rid of all this contamination. Once this is done you'll also need to do the drum. As you can see here there's loads in here as well. So again plenty of uh, clean fluid. This is brake and cut fluid that I'm using. There's many, many different types on the market, but just give it a thoroughly good cleaning all the way inside and get all the, all the contamination on it. Uh, that's it. As you can see straight away now, the difference in how it's coming up. So give it a quick wipe there. Note the best on the uh, white towel. Okay, there we go. So all nice and clean inside there now. So we're all ready for rebuilding. So we've got our new brake shoes. Feed the bottom spring in first. And then hook the top in. Again, remembering which hole these actually go in. Because you do need to make sure that these are in the right hole. Okay, oh, it's a bit jammed there. This is the fiddly part because you need to be able to get the spring in there as well as watching you don't trap your fingers because it will bite you. So just put the top in and then feed the spring back underneath. 
Sometimes you've, with these you'll feel like you're going three steps forward and two steps back. So that's it, just locate the shoe into place and then push the other one in. If you can't actually get to push it with your fingers safely without ripping your skin off, just use a pair of pliers and stretch against the spring and drop it in and you'll see it suddenly snap into place as it drops in. There we go, just like that. And we just push the bottom one back onto the handbrake adjuster and onto the wheel cylinder. These ones do actually have a floating wheel cylinder, so the wheel cylinder floats up and down. Okay, so now these are the brake retaining clips. Um, I will be getting some new ones of these, but as you can see, you've got the pin, spring, and then the retaining clip at the top. Make sure that you know the order that they're going. Just push it through the hole in the back of the drum, through the shoe, put the spring into place, and then it's a reverse procedure with the pliers, push it on, and 90 degree turn to lock it into place. That's it, and just wiggle. Again, it can be a bit awkward, but a little bit of perseverance, and there you go. And same with the other one. So we just drop it down the bottom there, push it in, and then put the spring on. Okay, put the spring on, okay, without dropping the spring. Put the spring in there, and then get the other cap. Now you notice with the cap, if I show you, okay, we just put in the pliers. Okay, if you look at the cap, you'll see that it's slotted, because the end of the pin is also slotted. So if you line the slots up roughly, before you go to push it on, you'll find it a lot easier to line up, compress the spring, and then twist it round, to lock it into place. That's it, and just make sure it's at 90 degrees to the slot so it can't jump off. And there we go, so the last little thing now is to put this split pin back in. So push that into the hole. Just like that, just give it a gentle tap to make it all the way home. There we go. And then open it out so it can't fall out. Uh, just simply push down with the screwdriver and open it up. Okay, there we go. And that's the shoes rebuilt. So we've got all nice and clean in there now. So this little screw here lines up with the drum. So make sure that this is where you put the drum on. So just push the drum into place. And as you can see there, the hole's lined up nicely. So we've got to put that screw back in. Uh, just screw that into there. You can actually get away without this screw, but it was always recommended to fit it if it's there. Okay, right, that's it. And then we just simply use the brake adjustment tool. There's different ones in the market, but this is the one we use to adjust the brake adjuster, which is at the back here, and adjust the drum up because obviously now we've got new shoes on, we need to readjust the brakes. So just one click at a time. Just fill the drum then and see how it feels. So do another click and yep, that's starting to pick up nicely. So then if you just get somebody to put the brake on, so put the brake on please, and then rotate the drum and get them to lock the brake and you'll feel how good it is. So all of a sudden it should stop and just like that. There we go. And no matter what you do, you can't turn it. So there we go. Brakes changed.